This is a message for my American viewers. Vote. Vote, vote, vote. Vote on Tuesday, November the 6th. Vote now, if you can. Get your friends to vote. Get your family to vote. Get everyone you know to vote. So, this is a topic I've been wanting to cover for a while, and it's something that plagues some of the most instant content on this website. The more serious kind, and that is bias. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where instead of putting a joke here, I want to ask you a question. Well, I promised I'd review Dragon Ball when the show was over, and it ended about two months right now, so I guess I'd better do this. I love them. into why bias is an issue, it should be important to explain what the word actually means so that the audience is aware of it. But if you happen to be that special little snowflake who knows what the word means and don't want to listen to me rant- Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Wild Spartans. Bias is a form of prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group, usually in a way to be considered unfair. While the definition of it and of itself is incredibly negative, I should point out that everyone has a bias to them. It stems from our backgrounds, our morals, and when it comes to certain topics. It should be noted that just because you have a bias that doesn't automatically mean it's a bad thing. But biases are something that everyone has, and that's what drives us to likes or dislikes. Like, I personally have a bias against those who have only liking for pizza with onion on it. It is possible to put your biases to the side and analyze something objectively, but you need to be able to admit your biases beforehand. And this is important and brings us to the main point of the video, where if you put yourself out there as unbiased, but then decide to show your biases on your sleeve, yeah, that's not good. At all. And we're gonna explain why here. So, let's talk about politics. <laughs> you mean the Chaos Emeralds? Ah! I hate politics, but everyone's got politics. We live in a world where politics do matter, and while I keep my own personal political opinion to myself, I think it's important that not everyone holds that same idea. I mean, take for example a couple years ago where we had Casey Neistat proclaiming that he was voting for Hillary Clinton. Now there's nothing wrong with talking about who you're going to vote for and hoping to get other people to vote as well. It's kind of important to the country. However, in the case of Neistat, he kind of forgets that he put out a video where he shows that he has a connection to Clinton. And that's where it talks about how Google and Neistat had a political agenda, and even if you don't believe that, there was still a lot of information talking about shady dealing that Hillary had, which I said didn't bring up. Don't take this to mean that because I'm pointing out flaws in Hillary that I'm a Trump supporter. I didn't vote for either. Who I voted for was... Let's do this! Leroy Dragons! Oh my god, he just ran in. Is he serious or is he joking? The world will never know. That being said, what should have been done in the situation is that Neistat should have admitted his biases about the election as well as any connections that he had with Hillary. Let's talk about a more recent example. So enter Jello Apocalypse, a YouTuber with a very big following who focuses on, on cartoony content. And a little bit ago, they did a video getting people to vote. And I'll give them this. The first 30 seconds are good. My nice friend. You just got roasted! Yeah. Yeah. The problem comes in after that, and we'll be explaining what's wrong with this. Even if you think your vote doesn't matter, because it does. I don't know why you're highlighting the popular vote. The popular vote doesn't decide elections and never will. It doesn't correlate who will become president. One message that this gives is that the left is trying to push that the popular vote should be the only deciding factor from here on out, which centrist and right-wing responses to have it called a desperate attempt to prevent a case of Bush or Trump happening again. Perhaps both sides are extreme, but it's good to point this out. What Jill and I will also neglect to tell you is that the number of times that we've had elections, you want to know how many presidents won the election when they lost the popular vote? Five times. Adam, Hayes, Harrison, Bush, and Trump. Now, I could go into how the Electoral College is actually the real reason for choosing the president and how they choose on the popular vote for each individual state, but that'd make the video tedious, repetitive, and boring. Rather, let's talk about how this is a highlight for the future parts of the video where he lumps these votes to be rigged. Democracy isn't about waiting for someone else to change things when things are so obviously wrong. Democracy is about waiting for you and your voice. Hey, vote. wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Thank you.
Excuse me. What the fuck? Oh boy, time to take a little deeper look into the visuals. So, for those who aren't familiar, there are two political parties that are major, Democrats and Republicans, and they're often represented by two different colors, blue for Democrats and red for Republicans. That's why we've got terms like red states and blue states. Now, you could say I'm wearing a tinfoil fedora, but considering the other factors, such as claiming that if you voted for Trump, you were wrong with your vote, and even using death of a young man to use emotional manipulation on the audience, we've pretty much thrown all activity out the window. Now, this is already a bad situation, as is painting this out to be a clear agenda, pushing while using fear-mongering. The overall message to get out and vote is perfectly fine. Hell yeah. I'm rich as fuck. Where it goes in the sewage is when it's seeping into a clear agenda to have people vote for a certain way, as well as guilt tripping people. To add on to this, when people were calling Jell Apocalypse out on Twitter for his comments section, where he, you know, took down comments and hit the like to dislike ratio, he responded with the following. In both of these examples, both have a clear bias on politics, one using dishonest tactics and the other not revealing that they had a connection to whom they are supporting. In the case of Neistat, I realize that I'm talking to a YouTuber audience, and I realize that analogies scare YouTube audiences, but to think of them akin to a game reviewer reviewing a game that they had a hand in making. There's going to be a clear conflict of interest in posing the question if there's any actual critique going on. Speaking of games... <laughs> comes to using bias, that bias can also spread to white wildfire in communities or even the whole of YouTube. Once the example comes from a topic that I talked about a while ago. Yonder Dev. If you're unfamiliar with the guy and are looking for an excuse to click off the video that doesn't involve eyeing up a razor, then maybe consider checking out my video on the matter where I talk a bit more about the subject. Don't be shy, I'll be your way for you while we're buy it, buy it. It. But in any case, the TLDW of this example is that Yandre Dev, a channel with roughly about over 2 million subscribers, made a video talking about how people that he's labeled gremlins. Fortunately, when you've got a channel that size, you decide to paint everyone who has criticized you in the past, that will instill a bias into your fan base. Which, those of your fan base, who tend to stick forks in the electrical sockets will go to every video that talks about you and attack the person who made it. Now, this isn't me saying that every member of a fan base will do that, nor is it me saying that there are people who are making BS claims against the guy. I know those people exist. In addition, this paints a bias across the minds of your fans. Those who make videos are comments that critique you, that makes them gremlins. This doesn't bug me, after all, it wouldn't be the first time something like this has happened to me. Actually, that's a pretty good example right there, and now I have an excuse to actually finally talk about this stupid live stream that MatPad did. Oh! Okay! Okay! No! Stop it! Stop it! No! Everyone's a critic, but regardless, this sort of thing happened a year ago where MatPat decided to do a live stream where he reacted to... The haters. The haters! Then proceeded to label people such as Proto Mario and the Gamer of Mars as haters, and attempted to debunk what they were saying about him. I say attempted, since during that there were points I agreed with and points I disagreed with, but that's neither here nor there, but the main point of this was to instill two forms of bias into his fans from MatPat. The first was due to paint his detractors as haters, and the second was to paint himself as someone who can take criticism. There were a lot of times where people called out MatPat couldn't take criticism and not address the videos that people have made when they dissect his arguments. I'm not referring to myself, I'm referring to people who respond to the videos like his TF2 vs Overwatch, people responding to his For Honor video, and people even responding to his PewDiePie video during the Wall Street Journal debacle. YouTubers of all sizes will try to get you to understand their biases and form other biases in you. Whether or not it's a bad thing, well, it depends on how the information is being presented. That's why I often tell people not to just take my word, but to look into other sides of the picture and will often list any biases I have in my videos if they pertain to it. Unless there are full-on facts backing up my claims, and even then it's important to have people do their own research to come to their own conclusions. I try to provide my sources so people can get an idea of where I'm coming from, but even then... Mm. See, you know... I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. Of course, that leads into my next topic. So, you guys ever hear of this person called Easy Peasy? No! He's one of those YouTubers who can fall into the gray area of is he serious or is he a troll? Well, some time ago he posted a video where he talked about the animation industry, focusing on the people behind shows like Star and the Force of Evil and Steven Universe. 
where he had a source that talked about the incestuous nature of the animation industry. The problem here comes from the fact that throughout the video, Easy PC just essentially provided only the testimony of someone who the audience has no idea if this person is credible, and in turn if the information is even trustworthy. We don't even know if this person actually exists. I mean, there are a few points on 4chan where they actually discovered where his identity is, but it's hard to tell if that's actually concrete or not, in my opinion. In fact, this could be considered slander, especially with this. This has to be th the best part of the video. There is apparently a veritable plague of STDs going around this sub big happy family. The reason I bring this up is because in a few times in the video, Easy Peasy will often refer to this hearsay as fact or confirm what he suspected. And I could go into his video since there are more points where his video sources get things wrong, but the video would more or less be becoming a 40 minute video of me going, I, I don't care, what do you want? If you can't confirm this to be true other than getting someone to tell you this information, and you don't provide any actual evidence, then that just spreads misinformation as well as damage any credibility you may have. In this video from Easy Peasy, essentially him using very shady testimony to back up a present bias that he had on the subject. Subject matter. You can see him talking about these subjects in the Steven Universe and Star vs. Forces of Evil videos, where he criticizes both the shows and the show staffs and uses testimony he received to confirm a few of his claims. I talked about how testimony can be used as one of the worst kinds of evidence that one can present, and it's something that I still hold to be true. And it's something that we all see time to time from YouTubers try to convince you with only their words, and that leads me to. <laughs> When I started getting to my points in this video, I stated that everyone has a bias, and it's something that I truly believe. And again, there's nothing wrong with having a bias. However, be it as it may, when it comes to discussions, critiques, or even showing the darker side of YouTubers, it's best to put your bias on the side when you try to examine these types of media, situations, and of course, individuals. It's a fine line, however, if you admit that you do have a bias in the situation, or at the very least, see both sides of the subject you're willing to talk about, even being open to another person's opinion or what they have to say. And it's why I often get asked what you guys think in the comments, to give me your thoughts, to give me your opinions, to Correct me if I ever get anything wrong. Shutting down discussion, shutting down opposing opinions, or even mocking your detractors, it's something that at one point or another everyone's done. I've done this, and it's something that I don't look back upon with pride. I have bias. You have bias. YouTubers have bias. Everyone has a bias. But what we need to do is look past our biases and attempt to view situations in a more neutral view. Being completely neutral on every topic is pretty much impossible, however. You shouldn't allow your bias to completely control your perception. After all, you don't want to fall to the deadly bias of YouTube. But I'll still slam people who are completely wrong in the comments sections and drink their tea! Oh!